Hey comic fans, this is Jimmy the Geek Aficionado and I want to welcome back to Slab City. Today we're going to be talking about how to make money in the margins. Stay tuned for the video if you want to find out how. You're watching Slab City on the Geek Aficionado YouTube channel. I'd like to ask you to click the thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell while we introduce you to our sponsors. Slab City is proud to partner with The Comic Rehab. For all your comic book and magazine cleaning and pressing needs, contact The Comic Rehab, where we breathe new life into your old books. And by Inferno Comic Stores, specializing in vintage and graded comics. Shop The Inferno at www.infernocomicstores.com. Hey, everybody. This is Jimmy the Geek Aficionado, and I want to talk to you today about how to make money in the margins. We're going to get into it in a minute, but first, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this box, uh, which includes a book that I purchased from Skeff's Comic Knowledge, uh, who packaged it up very beautifully. Uh, inside this book, uh, I'm sorry, inside this box is a book that uh, I believe still has a significant amount of room to move up. So I put, uh, put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, uh, and I purchased it at, uh, at a little bit below current market value, uh, and I've already been seeing it go up. So we're going to open this box up and find out what I got. All right, so I've got a little razor blade here. I'm going to open up this tape. i got to be honest with you. I've never seen a box wrapped up like this. I mean, it's almost like a Christmas present. <laughs> nice personalization there from uh, Mr. Scaff. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the great deal. You gotta love pull tabs, right? All right, here we go. This should be the end of it, I hope. Okay, oh, this is cool. So, so we got a nice little bundle that we can open up so I can show all of you. Now, if you're paying attention to what's going on in the current um, Marvel Cinematic and uh, Extended Universe, you'll find out that there is a particular character who has been cast in Greenland for her own show, and that is Miss Marvel. Now, I don't mean Carol Danvers because she's already been cast in her own show, or I'm sorry, her own movies, but she's now going by the name Captain Marvel. This is Kamala Khan, right, who, quite honestly, is probably one of the biggest rising stars of Marvel Comics in the last, uh, last decade, you know, I mean, yeah, I would say even bigger, well, marginally, uh, at least as big as, let's say, uh, uh, Spider-Gwen and Miles Morales, uh, Spider-Man. But this is her first appearance, uh, first full appearance, showing her and showing her in costume, at least on the, on the cover, um, as, uh, as Miss Marvel. Uh, this is all new Marvel Now point one, number, number one. Now, there is a variant uh, edition of this book out there that just, it's crazy prices, right? Just like Ultimate Fallout 4's variant, and just like the Greg Land variant for, uh, for Edge of Spider-Verse number two for the first Spider-Gwen. So all three of these are just hitting ridiculous prices. Uh, now, I paid $650 for this particular book. Now, when I did that, market averages were anywhere between $700 and $1,100 uh, in terms of recent sales. Uh, right? That's not an average, but like that's where the market's uh, been turning towards. So I know that this book still has a lot of room. We, uh, we've gotten a casting detail on, um, on Kamala Khan, and we are expecting that there's going to be a show 
that's going to come out soon or she'll be showing up in one of the movies. Uh, we don't know exactly what yet, but what we do know is that this book is still going up. Now, I didn't get this book raw and then have it graded, but I can still make money on it. Uh, I'm going to hold it for a bit. I'm going to hold it until we get a little bit more, maybe until we start getting set photos uh, and, and some of the pictures of the actress in costume and some verification of where she's going to be showing up, whether it's in a, a Disney Plus series, a Hulu series, or, or actually in a movie. Uh, but what we do know is it's coming and we do know that this, the value of this book is, is going up. So I'm going to make something in the margin, right? I'm going to make some profit on it, not a significant profit because I didn't get it raw and then have it slapped, right? So there is a difference in there, but money can be made still buying books at the right time when there's still room for growth, right? And that's what we've got. Uh, more details on that coming up. Two, one. Now, what do I mean by margins? Put simply, it's making small profit percentages on the sale of an asset. Margin refers to the difference between the selling price and the seller's costs for the goods or services, expressed as a percentage of the selling price. For example, if I purchase a book on the rise for $200 and then turn it around and sell it for $250 after expenses, then I've made a 20% profit on that book. And in any financial market, making a 20% profit is an excellent gain. Earlier in the video, I showed a copy of All New Marvel Now Point One, featuring the first full appearance of Kamala Khan. Now, if I'm buying that book right now for $650 and I think that I can turn it around later when the show debuts and make over $1,000, I've made a significant profit on that book. The point to really understand here is that don't be afraid of higher prices on books. If the market indicates that that book is still rising enough that you can still make profit on it, you want to make sure that you're buying that book possibly when the news breaks, but definitely not after the trailer releases because that's when the peak typically happens. So do your market research. Look at the books that are available. If there's still room to grow on it, then take the plunge. If you feel that it's crested, wait till it comes down but don't buy it at the peak. That's all we're saying. Our pick of the week for February 22nd, 2021 is Amazing Spider-Man number 86, featuring the first appearance of the modern iconic Black Widow costume. From her introduction in Tales of Suspense number 52, Natasha Romanov has been seen sporting a very dressed up outfit, complete with a black veil commonly worn by widows. Shortly after appearing in later issues of that Tales of Suspense run with Hawkeye and subsequently in The Avengers, she had donned a more fitting ensemble decked out in a fishnets and a cape with a very pointy eye mask. However, it wasn't until she became a real widow after her husband the Red Guardian died in Avengers number 44 that she earned that original veil. Wanting to make a change, she moved to a more progressive outfit that she felt was more fitting to the swinging 70s that we see her design and don the more iconic skin-type black outfit and widow's bite gauntlets that we have come to know and love. This issue of Amazing Spider-Man is a highly undervalued key for Black Widow, and with the MCU movie finally set to be released, it's one that you won't want to sleep on, even if the rest of the world is right now. According to CoverPrice.com, the current raw comic sales average is $62.50, with graded 9.4s selling at around $469. The purchase trend on this book is down by a huge 44%, which makes getting this book now a prime opportunity. You can be picking up a high-grade raw for around $100, slabbing it, and turning it around for around $400 for a huge return on investment of more than 233%. And if you want to hold on to it in your personal collection, you can do that too because it's a great Bronze Age key for an iconic character. I'm going to show you today what I'm going to send to CGC next. This is a nice fat submission, so you're not going to want to miss out because, as you've heard me say before, Thor number one, right? Straight fire. Jane Foster, first appearance is Thor. And what's better than sending one copy to CGC? Sending two copies to CGC. I'm doubling down on this book because I believe in it because I believe that it's going to keep going up in price. So I'm going to get these beauties slabbed up and find out 
what I can make off of them when it goes to market, especially once that movie news comes out. Um, well, movie news is out, but when, I, when we start seeing uh, actual stills of, of Natalie Portman dressed up as the God of Thunder, that's when this book is going to catch fire in a, in a serious way. But it's not only that, right? What else do we want to send? We got lots and lots to send. I'm telling you, lots to send. What else we got? First appearance of Cindy Moon. Amazing Spider-Man number four from volume four. First appearance of Cindy Moon who becomes Silk. Again, not just one, but two. So we're gonna hit that two times because I believe in this book. I believe in the, what the market is telling me. I believe that it's gonna to continue to go up. And we'll look at those market numbers at the end. But not just her first appearance, we're gonna get the number one of her first series, right? Silk number one. Now, I wish I had the variant for this because that variant is just bonkers, right? Just going through the roof. But sadly, I do not, but it's okay. We got some other potential movie news. This is Bloodstone number one. It's the first appearance of Elsa Bloodstone, the daughter of Ulysses Bloodstone, who first uh, debuted in, I wanna say it's uh, Marvel Presents number one. Uh, this is her debut uh, in her own title. Let's uh, see if we can get a better shot on that. We've got some glare going, but uh, if you haven't seen it and you, uh, and you wanna find out, pick it up. It's Bloodstone number one. Okay, moving on. Put those aside. There was a time that Carol Danvers was called Miss Marvel. In this book, she takes on the name Captain Marvel as a an homage to Marvel, uh, whom she spent a lot of time with. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, his first appearance or her first appearance is tied, you know, with his first appearance back in Marvel Superheroes number thirteen, and. She got her powers through an accident connected with with uh, Marvel, and she, at this stage, uh, in Avenging Spider-Man number nine, decides that she's going to take on the name Captain Marvel. Now, this book skyrocketed in price when the news of Carol Danvers in a Captain Marvel movie was coming out, right? Because this was the first time. Now that price on this book, the value of this book has gone down significantly. Uh, I was able to get this lab, the, this raw copy for not that much money, right? You know, in, in relation to uh, what it currently can command. But this book was seeing graded copies in 9.8 sell upwards of around $500 uh, before the movie came out. After the movie came out, lackluster performance, the box office, uh, specifically after uh, not much going on with her in the Avengers Endgame movie. So it began to slip a little bit more. I still believe in this book, um, especially since I got it for you know a really good price. And I still think that this book is gonna go back up in value again in the future. Uh, but I'm probably gonna hold on to this for quite some time uh, just because it's, you know, it, it has that significant value. Now, because she took on the name of Captain Marvel, that left room for someone to take on the name of Miss Marvel from her. This is Kamala Khan's first full appearance as uh, Miss Marvel uh, in costume. This is all new Marvel Now point one. This book is going through the roof. Now, I don't, it's a high grade copy, but I don't, it's definitely not a 9.8. Uh, we're going to send that out anyway because, again, money's in the margins, right? I got it for almost nothing, and even in a 9.2, it's still well over $100, and it's just going back up, right? Uh, we've already got a casting on it. She's destined to appear somewhere. We don't know where yet. Don't have news on that, but she's coming, and that's what's important uh, to the market right now. So we'll get this one graded up and probably move it on to a new home after we hold on to it for a little bit. That as well as this. This is uh, the first printing of her first series. Uh, I want to say it's Miss Marvel, like volume five or six. 
um, but it's it's the first time she has her own title uh, and it's also commanding high prices now the later printings of it are going through the roof that seventh print just astronomical but this is the first print and it still commands a really good price and these are all nine uh, these are 9.8 candidates so I can't be uh, disappointed about that this one though not so much but it's okay again we're still making money right and that's the name of this game is to make money all right now uh, I've showed this before this is the first appearance of Riri Williams this is the third print variant that has her face on the cover and that one's going for some good money this one again not not near mint well it's near mint but it's not a 9.8 uh, but it doesn't matter it's the women of power variant and again I didn't get it for much and it's going to it's going to go through the roof right uh, I'll hold on to it because this variant is the one that actually has been picking up a lot of a, a lot of uh, value uh, that's again not to say that the rest of them aren't but that one has a significant amount. Also, issue number nine, this is her first appearance in armor. And this one, again, massive ground. The variants, again, much higher, but these still solid, still solid prices. Can't, can't beat them, can't deny it. And we'll see what we can get on those. All right, more along the line of the movie speculation. Well, not speculation. This is Young Avengers number one. It's the first appearance of a number of characters. One of those characters is Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop, who is going to be portrayed by Haley Steinfeld in the Hawkeye series. It's currently filming right now for Disney+. Plus. So this book, taken off, absolutely taken off. And this is a solid candidate for a 9.8. Also, if you don't like Disney Plus, HBO Max is pending a new series for Green Lantern Corps. This is a nice one because this is uh, Green Lantern 25. Uh, this is the uh, Ivan Rice and uh, what's his name, jo uh, Jeff Johns run. And now the nice thing about this, this is this is the first appearance of the different lanterns of the different spectrums, right? Uh, orange, red purple, indigo, right? All of them, they were in this one here. So be on the lookout for that. Green Lantern 25 uh, by Jeff Johns and Ivan Rice uh, because that's a huge book that has a, a lot of new characters uh, into it. And, and it's, the prices on that are, are definitely going up. Okay. Now, there's been a lot of play in the hip-hop variants that Marvel put out. Uh, specifically... This one here, uh, this is uh, Spider-Gwen, issue is that, issue number 24. This is the first appearance of Venom in the Spider-Gwen universe, where it bonds with her and she becomes Gwenom. You gotta love the names. Anyhow, but this is also, as I understand it, this is a hip-hop variant based off of uh, Missy Elliott. Um, yeah, I believe that's correct. Otherwise, I'll show some correction at the bottom, but uh, this was the first one, and then they went in really into the, the album cover uh, art, but huge book nonetheless, uh, 9.8s, having a great time. All right, everybody loves Star Wars, right? Well, if you watch The Mandalorian, you know that we can expect some new characters coming out. Thrawn, all right, that one with Ahsoka Tano, that episode with Ahsoka Tano going after that magistrate, what does she ask? Where's your boss? Thrawn. Grand Admiral Thrawn first appeared in the Timothy Zahn novel, Heir to the Empire. This is issue one, featuring the first appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn in, Marvel, in comics. It's a Dark Horse, represent, a Dark Horse version. This one, blowing through the roof. Right? If you can get your hands on raw copies, do it because it's just going up raw and graded. Uh, the thing about this book, though, you have to be aware of is that it has a black back cover and it also is cardstock. So cardstock is very unforgiving when it comes to showing creases and color breaks and things of that nature. So if you're looking for a 9.8 candidate, be aware of that. Make sure you're not just looking at the front. Make sure you look at the back if you're buying online. Make sure that the seller provides you excellent pictures of the back of the book. 
that's key, right? Very important. Um, it's going to be hard to really kind of tell, like, you know, with creases and stuff like that, you know, bends in the cardboard and the cover, uh, unless the seller knows how to look for it. So just be, be very careful of that, right? That's an important distinction because pressing may not resolve those issues. This is the last Padawan, Kanan. Uh, it's the full, yeah, Star Wars Kanan, the last Padawan. That's the full title. Uh, this features the first appearance of Kanan in comics. Kanan from the Star Wars Rebels TV show. Uh, it also features in cameo a number of the other characters from the show as well. Uh, number six of this of this series is the one that's been classified as the first full appearance of those Star Wars Rebels characters, uh, even though there's a cameo here in issue number one and it's the first appearance of Kanan. So both of those are still commanding decent prices. So it's not going to be a problem if you pick up one or the other. They're still both going to give you solid money, return investments, uh, buying them raw and getting them slabbed. So these next two are going to stay in the PC because I'm not letting them out. First one is Crisis on Infinite Earths, number seven. This is the death of the original Supergirl, Kara Zor-El, who first appeared in Action Comics number 252. This is the Adam Hughes cover of Catwoman number 51 from volume three. And it is just the best cover, in, in my opinion, uh, that's ever been done for Catwoman. Um, it's awesome. One of the main points, the, the main features about this is the, the numbers that she's holding up in her, uh, on her placard for her, uh, her identification. Those are the numbers that were used in the TV show Lost. So it's a little homage to that, kind of a throwback. Uh, but regardless, I didn't watch the Lost TV series. I just think it's a smoking cover, right? And everybody else agrees with me. But anyway, those are the books that I'm sending off to CGC. Stay tuned for uh, when we get them back. Uh, they may not all go in the same submission, so we might start uh, kind of you know bringing them out. But uh, we'll talk about the grades and we'll talk about the values when they come back. Thanks everybody for watching Slab City. Remember to buy raw and sell slabbed. Have a good night.